In today's episode of the Python Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Nicole Kelly. She's the VP of Growth at Whiteboard. And at Whiteboard, they're all about flow. Actually, if you head over to the website, I have it open here in front of me, guys, for the people who are listening in, head over to whiteboard.com. Uh, Basically, uh, they you know have to mention workflows that work flawlessly and you know integrating them into your operations as well. So we really want to figure out what Whiteboard is all about, how they're doing this, and how they support IT operations. So Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to meet you. Of course. So maybe give us sort of a 360 overview at first. What is Whiteboard all about in your own words? Sure. So Windward is an IT operations consulting firm. We primarily work with a Fortune 1000 to help them fl find flow through their IT operations, which essentially, if you think about an organization like, you know, a big bank or something like that, and all of the IT that is required to support that, we help them deploy software systems that essentially help them work together and work their and help their systems work together. So okay. that's kind of the primary overview of what the company does. Mm -hmm. No, that makes makes a lot of sense. Now, what would you say? Which types of organizations? Uh, you know, talked about uh, IT uh, operations here. Which types of organizations benefit the most? Maybe explain to us, like, what would be a company that is a really well suited fit for Windward? Yeah, so I mean, we're looking at large enterprise organizations. So the organizations that have complex complex infrastructures. Specifically, we specialize in service now. So companies that are looking at service now uh, related to IT operations management or IT service management are the really big areas that we play in. And we look across that IT ecosystem for things like how do you automate? How do you apply artificial intelligence? How do you apply machine learning? How do you make sure your processes work? How do you make sure your data, data is integrated uh, that you can actually use the data that you're looking at and so that it's actionable? Very good. Now, who would you say within those organizations is typically the one that picks up and says, you know, we need something like Windboard. Is that like an operations manager? Is that like a CTO? Is that like a maybe even from a C-suite that says, you know, we need to streamline operations um, here? Where does this sort of initial signal and demand typically come from? It really, it could vary throughout an organization. We're really looking at having a conversation with that VP of IT. Um, you know, that tends to be the person that has the budget for a project like this and also has the directive to, to institute a project like that. Um, we also have conversations at the CIO level very often because, you know, the, the idea of how IT serves the business is really important. But primarily, we're looking at that kind of VP, CIO level um, when we get into a client, many times we're working with a director in order to actually execute that project. It makes a lot of sense. Now, what would you say, how do these folks learn about uh, Windboard? Like what's the sort of the client acquisition channels that they go through or sort of how would you describe their journey? Yeah, so we have a couple of different ways that customers come for uh, come for uh, to us. One is they come through our sales channel. So our sales channel is always out there actively prospecting and they're doing their own activities in order to get people in rooms and things like that. So they can come through the sales channel. Um, another avenue is to come through our partner channel. So we integrate software like ServiceNow, Dynatrace, Big Panda, uh, Cribble. And so we'll work with those particular partners in order to have go into the market together in a better together kind of story. Um, where they sell the software, we sell the implementation services, and then the other area that they come from is through our website and through our marketing activities. You mentioned the website there, like, how do you think about the website? Like, what role does it play? Because, you know, very often, what we see actually a lot on the show when we talk about sort of, you know, more complex technical uh, services, the website starts to pick up more and more as being part of the buyer's journey. Like, how do you think, how do you think about that? Yeah, I think we're kind of starting to learn that in our industry right now. I started the marketing team at Windward about two years ago. And when I started, there really was no marketing. They had an email list of 1,300 people that they had never even marketed to or kept warm or nurtured in any way. And so I really kind of stood that engine up. And we went through a branding exercise last year where we redid all the branding and all the messaging. And that's the, the effort that you see in the new website is you know where you see that today. Now we're starting to do things like using advertising to drive traffic to the website to see where it's converting and where it's not. And we're at the point right now of really just testing messaging and making sure that we're hitting the right message in the market. And then we're gonna start conversion rate testing. Mm -hmm. Very cool, yeah. You mentioned conversion rate testing. What do you personally think is sort of a strength of the website now that you've done that that you know rebrand or that up upgrade of the brand and versus where do you see room for improvement on the page? 
I think our, the biggest, you know, asset that we have on the website right now is that the message is really clear. Like it's, it's really easy to tell what we do, especially if you're in our industry. So you can clearly see where we play. Um, I think the area where we can work on improving is looking more for specifically where we have our calls to action, how we're deploying our calls to action, um, all of those kind of things or where we're going to start looking next to optimize. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, now, uh, we talked a bit uh, about the website, we talked a bit about growth. So maybe if you summarize for us when, you know, somebody's coming to uh, Windward, like what's something that they can expect that is sort of, you know, difficult to get somewhere else? Like what, what sort of, sort of, you know, cornerstone of the collaboration when working with Windward? Yeah, I mean, I think people come to us when they have a really big problem to solve. You know, it's like something that where they're having to look across their entire ecosystem. They have to look at how they deliver value. When they have these complex problems to solve, they really come to us. And really, when they want a partner that they can trust to deliver both strategy and implementation, many times consulting firms are either of those things. They're, you know, like an Accenture, PwC, Deloitte, they're great at strategy. Um, some of the smaller players in the market are usually integrators. They're great at integration. We happen to do both. Um, and we come in as a real value add to companies that are used to playing with some of the bigger players in the market. Um, they can come to us and get that same level of service, and they can also get the people to implement the project at the same time. Mm. Very cool. Now, you're heading, um, you're obviously heading up the growth function, right? And you've mm -hmm. been sort of, you know, in your past, you're coming very much from a, even from a, even at some point from a social media angle, you've been writing for a, a, a long time in the past for the social media examiner, which is obviously a great, a great source. Um, now, on the, on the flip side, you've been in deeply involved in strategy work. Um, now, what I'm curious is somebody like you, where do you still like to educate yourself? Like, where do you personally find valuable information, resources to keep on educating yourself as a growth leader? Is there any sort of platforms, peer groups, um, books? Like, what do you personally like to do? Yeah, I mean, I so the the key things that I'm researching right now are how we can better integrate with sales. We have like a great relationship with our sales organization. And so there's a lot of collaboration between us, but that doesn't mean that there isn't friction during the handoffs, right? You can be very collaborative with each other and still have process breakdowns. So we're doing things like, you know, learning how we can better qualify our leads in order to make sure we're passing quality leads over to sales. We're working on an account-based marketing approach and aligning that to the account-based selling approach to make sure that we're not crossing paths. Um, those are the two, I would say the two categories that I'm researching the most right now are just account-based marketing and account-based selling. As we slowly approaching the, the end of the interview, I would have some, some rapid fire questions. We flew through, through the questions today. Are you ready for those? Yes, absolutely. What is the last book that you read or the last podcast you listened to? Uh, the Genius Zone. Mm -hmm. What is one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Service now. If there would be no boundaries in technology, right? You have a magic wand. What's the one thing that you would fix for your role in marketing and growth? Conversion rate optimization. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about your company? Oh, probably during the shift in the pandemic. We were making a lot of strategic shifts at that time. So um, yeah, that was a little bit of a stressful time for sure. <laughs> um, if you allow, we do a little bit of time travel, right? We go back to um, maybe even St. Leo, right? St. Leo University, right? You're heading right. out of that initial round of education into the world of you know growth and business. And what's the one advice that you would give your younger self, you know, heading out of formal education into the world of growth and business? Um, I would say just to continue to be bold and courageous. You know, I did a, in the, especially in the early days of my career, like I came, you know, you come up against these corporate politics and all this kind of stuff that you hear about and these horror stories. Like I definitely had some horror stories when I started out and I really like stood up and spoke out about those. I ended up like getting fired for jobs for speaking out against, you know, workplace and, you know, things that were inappropriate in the workplace and things like that. And I'm really like proud that I did that. And so I would, you know, recommend that I continue to do that. I love that you say that because I mean, more than once I've heard on the show that people said they should have been bolder and you just say, 
<laughs> me as bold as you were. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I love to hear that. Um, Nicole, um, you know, I really appreciate you took the time with us today to be a guest on Partner Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about Winward, what's the one thing that they should remember? I would say just remember that if like you have really complex IT infrastructure and you need to make sure it actually stays up and works and that it's reliable, then we're a great source for help on that. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Platform Presents. Thank you.